the man behind the Google leak that changed what we know about Google search and how the search algorithms are working. Hi everyone, hope you're doing good. My name is Erfan Azimi. So over the last three months, me and our team, we've done extensive research to reverse engineer how Google's AI functionalities, including Gemini and AI overviews are working. And what we found was frankly mind-blowing, but at the same time includes information that we previously did know about, including the click data and query log data. What's actually more fascinating is, cannot essentially share those with you. If you're interested to learn more about our strategy that we have for AI reviews, get in touch. But I'll be sharing as much as I can publicly for you to be able to you know, do the same and get fantastic results and optimize your brand and your site for the future of search, conversational search, which already at the beginning, I was a skeptical. But we've definitely seen a rise in the number of referral traffic coming from AI chatbots, which gives me an indication five years, 10 years from now, the search may look a complete different game. So we are ready. We've done our research and I'm here with you to share the outcome of how Google's AI systems are working and how you can improve the visibility your company or your website has in the uh, Google's AI chatbots. So let's get into it. So our first initial test is started by understanding whether a query even deserves an AI overview. In our, essentially in our data, we were encountering lots of queries that AI overviews was not being shown. My initial assumption was, hey, they only show AI overviews for high search volume queries because those queries they already get a lot of users so they need to essentially be able to generate AR reviews for those terms confidently for it to be actually financially a wise decision because as you know the processing is a quite expensive process and but that was not true and we had to essentially dig into it more to figure out a couple of different scenarios that what makes a query to deserve an AI overview. So a couple of theories we had was the search volume of the query, the, you know, and then was lots of informational related terms targeting the query. And also another theory was click data influencing the search query. Another one, essentially query log data indicating favors to our informational content which means for related terms people want informational content which and it came back to essentially the fact that essentially none of those none of those were true so we had to essentially test more to figure out what's happening what we found for the query to this day that i'm searching for the query project management software allow me to actually bring it up here for the query project management software no ai overview is being shown in sweden ClickUp ranks number one in Germany, Asana ranks number one in UK, Trello ranks number one in the US. So what we can definitely see is a difference in essentially different geolocations, different AI overviews is being shown. There is a reason behind it. The click data and log data of search queries. People in different countries have different interests. One brand could be more popular in a certain country, but not so much popular in a different country. We found out the basis of AI overviews is founded upon engagement signals, not purely based upon the mentions that you're getting from the open web, which actually opened up a lot of different experiments to isolate those exact mechanisms in place and allow me to run you some of the our understandings of essentially how they actually generate the results what we found was very simple does the query have enough click and log data to be essentially a popular topic for the ai or reviews to be to be activated upon and if yes then the ranking part starts from right here so what they do is they essentially scrape the top 10 generated results scrape 
is not a good word, but perhaps let's say analyze the top 10 results. I come up with essential scientific or artificial queries, then those artificial queries are essentially start line for the algorithm to figure out what the users, what these 10 articles are trying to highlight. And they come with essential list of questions. Hey, what are the top companies for project management software? Or what are the benefits of using project management software? And, base, and they generate the queries and they will search for those queries and they'll try to figure out, they essentially try to generate results by those searches that are being done on the artificial queries. Which means, the given the results can change based on the geolocation, given, you know, like people have different companies they have different audiences and different and different geos they prefer to you know they prefer different things because of the cultural differences or also like like marketing differences that, that the companies have and based on the click data and engagement data the artificial the results can differ therefore the artificial queries can differ and if the artificial queries do differ the click data could differ and the whole scenario is very it makes AI overview is a very dynamic situation but which is possible to optimize for those so let me get into it more the first thing you want to do uh, to for the query project management management software as I, as I mentioned two aspects are being uh, mentioned so here's a screenshot of the page it's the artificial queries are related to in the country, the US, it's currently benefits and also top providers of project management software. Then what you need to do, one you need to understand is how you can create a narrative that essentially aligns with those artificial queries and then get your brand promoted for on those artificial queries. Because if you cannot get the artificial queries right, and if you try to Get your brand visibility using digital PR in a way that you're trying to touch different aspects which are not relevant to those artificial queries. That essentially is, is just a random mention on the web that is not taken into account for generating the AI overviews. So what you want to do, for example, if you're trying to optimize for project management software, you need to talk about, you need to create a page talking about benefits of project management software on trusted sites, then you want to make sure your brand is visible on those pages. Additionally, for top services targeting project management software, it's actually a different story that I'll get into. It's actually the, the historical data of your search volume data, what we found was quite eye-opening that for AI overviews currently, how the results are being sorted is not based upon the quantity of mentions you're getting, it's being based upon the search volume for that keyword in your particular country. And that's exactly why the query project management software. In the US, Trello is the number one, but in, in different countries such as Germany, ClickUp is the, is the second one. In the UK, Asana is the first one. So that just comes to the fact that, hey, let's actually look at the Google Trends to figure out the popularity of the brand. So if you want to be actually highlighted as a top provider of service, it just comes to one fact, the search volume. The search volume from the navigational queries and from related queries. How many related search volumes your brand is associated to in that particular region that you're trying to be visible in via navigational queries, via queries that are referring to your brand name. Hey. For example, one situation, one example would be if there are a lot of people searching from the US uh, trying to search for project management software Asana from users uh, who are actually conducting the search in the US. Your brand, if you're Asana, you will essentially see a boost in the US for the query project management software, which is very interesting. So from our understanding of what we essentially thought in the past that, hey, I'm just going to you know, buy like 500 mentions and comments on forums or whatever, that's not it. Even Reddit pages, even if they're topical in some way, could not help you unless the signals are aligning. Additionally, what we found was very eye-opening for us as well, that this actually came from the DOJ document, but we actually tested this to figure out the functionalities of the algorithm and confirm the statement that uh, Googler was making in the DOJ. The, the claim was they use click data in order to figure out 
the importance of the pages, the quality of the pages, to figure out whether or not we will counting, take into account context coming from this page in our AI systems. And that was a true assumption. That was a true statement that Googler made in DOJ. What we found was, yes, pages with more long clicks, with more engagement signals, they essentially will be able to dominate compared to pages without engagement signals. So that means all the press releases that are being published targeting, you know, in some way that, hey, just the brand mention is there, but it doesn't get traction. That particular page is completely ignored for generating a summary from the AIO reviews, which we, if you look at it, it actually makes sense. You know, press releases, generally speaking, or mentions on random review sites, they tend to not to get that much engagement. They tend to be, you know, those are very spammy pages, most likely, or pages, you know, profile on, on a forum or a comment that you, you're actually mentioning on a page that doesn't get not that much visits, that page doesn't matter. So I'm going to introduce you a concept that I would call it narrative technique. With the narrative technique, your goal is to create a particular narrative about, about a query, an aspect, an intent that hasn't been talked about much on the web. You want to be the dominating person for that narrative. For example, for project management software, I'm going to create a narrative for project management software for, for year 2025. And you can do it by just getting some articles ranked top 10 that they actually have this narrative in them, you know, targeting the query 2025. Then Google will essentially summarize and create, based on the summary they create from the top 10, they will create artificial queries that they will search exclusively for project management software for 2025. Then you want to make sure you actually get a lot of click data at those pages that you're creating, those press releases, those digital PR efforts are getting click data from the specific narrative that you created. With that, you would be essentially, given you are getting a lot of engagement data, targeting the narrative project management software for 2025, you will be able to have a large amount of click data for Google's algorithms to be able to summarize your brand as a top provider. But that's not just that. You need to take into consideration based on our test, the number one factor that was indicating whether or not his brand is uh, the difference between a spot number one and spot number five is purely based on the branded search volume in there from relevant queries that the queries you're targeting from the same geolocation that you want to actually try to optimize for. So that essentially comes, opens the door. Another concept, which is the nav queries. Any query in the same browsing session is being considered as a nav query. And which means, let me give you a good example here. May not be the best example, but I'll try my best. You search for Apple. You don't, you know, the results that are being shown to you are about the fruit, Apple. Then immediately after the search, within the next 13 uh, seconds or so, you search for Apple Tech Company and you do a long click on apple.com. Then for users who actually, who then search for Apple on Google search results, their intent will change and the type of queries that the type of pages that will be shown to the user for the keyword Apple will be about the tech company, not about the fruit. Apple. So that's exactly what you want as well. Whenever someone's searching for project management software, you want majority of those people to actually refer to your brand. You want majority of those people to give it the signal to Google, hey, this brand is being associated to this particular query. And you want to make sure those are happening from the geos that you actually care about. If, for example, if you want to get a lot of, you want to be visible from the users in the US, then the efforts, the marketing efforts that you're doing need to actually correlate with that. So what we can clearly see from our own data, search volume of brand from that, especially that's true for the, you know, the, the least type of uh, things that they actually try to show the top brands. It's purely based upon search volume, nav boost queries, relevant queries, related queries, from the same geos you're trying to target, you're trying to rank. So that's pretty much it. And additional things you need to take into account, the index of the page, 
that you're creating for digital PR, that you're trying to use the narrative technique to create pages highlighting your brand, need to be in. So based on the DOJ document, Google has three classifications for the pages on the web. Low quality pages that they get no or little, long clicks, page views from Chrome. Medium quality pages which they have some click data or some engagement data, but it's not great. Or high quality pages that are dominating the search results. So you, there is definitely needs uh, to be the efforts that you're trying to do. One is strategy going to be, hey, maybe run a Google Ads campaign or Facebook Ads campaign, a viral news campaign on the articles that are already matching the narrative that you want to optimize for and the articles that already are mentioning your brand in them. So that actually can save a lot of costs on your end by just focusing on the existing articles or the ex existing brand mentions are they don't they previously didn't have the engagement data needed to be considered as a trustworthy page for the citations to be taken into account. But that's only true if you want to optimize. That's only true for the first stage of the algorithm, which is going to be the, you know, just just let's just summarize it. Then they will take into account the the artificial queries as well as the brand the search volume. Another experiment was the resource section, the section that does on the right side of the AI overviews or AI mode that does show you the resource links, the citation links. Those ones are purely based upon engagement data from navigational queries and essentially clicks. clicks. So it's very important to make sure you use clickbaity titles. I would not call them clickbait in a spammy sense, but in a sense of engaging clicks that you don't use something boring that is only purely based purely designed for like the seo boost you want to make sure the the, the citations you're publishing the ram mentions you're publishing the they're using narrative technique are all optimized for the maximum click probability and ctr then you want to make sure the articles you're publishing are clearly answering the questions the users are having and the reason is you want the long, you want it to be actually long click, not a short click. That starts by making sure you do provide valuable content, at least the form of the content that makes users to stick on the page for as long as it can be. If that's four minutes, five minutes, that's great. If it's less than a minute, or less than two minutes, you have some work to do. So this is actually going to open up a lot of, a lot of things that we previously, a lot of SEOs were not doing, a lot of digital marketers are not doing because they were thinking about, hey, let's, let me just pur purchase like 10,000 from mentions, common mentions across the web, that's going to do something, but clearly based on our experiments, that will do nothing. You want to create a narrative that hasn't been touched upon and you want to get those narrative ranked on the top of good search results using link building and using, you know, creating enough engagement to those pages to be considered as trustworthy for the algorithm, for your brand to be even shown as, you know, as a, as a potential potential candidate for AR reviews, then you want to actually increase the brand search volume. Can be done through even these spammy tactics such as pop under will work. Do I recommend it? Particularly not. Sometimes it ends up giving you a lot of short clicks and damaging you, but that can work as well, depending how it's set up. So. So the, to summarize it, reviews functions are based upon notion of mostly engagement and not based on notion of quantity and training data. The training data is being done, but then the results by, by are being refined based on the engagement data and based on the search volume data and based on the click data. Resource section, as I said, is purely based upon long clicks and Chrome views, so, and r related searches. But the actual answers that you're getting, if you want to make sure a brand is being visible there, you need to make sure for that particular geo, for that particular term, there are a lot of brand searches associated with your name. That's pretty much it. I haven't shared everything here. If you're actually interested in seeing more, feel free to get in. And as always, have a great day. Looking forward to seeing you next time.